The Cornet Russo thing, which you mentioned a few times, would, you know, come, bubbles to the surface every year or so or two years. And then it kind of goes down to just being um, some accepted, known song that maybe has been played too many times. And then uh, the tune changes a little bit a couple years later and it bubbles to the surface. Well, it's back to the surface now, I guess, because what's changed is you both have podcasts. So you're both reaching... Um, mass market, mass audiences rather weekly. So in his case, weekly. You're you're on a little more, but uh, what? How? How is it different this time? Is it because you're responding this time? And in the past, I even wrote you privately one time, and I could say and said, um, I think I even said you you've usually taken the high road with this. What's what's this all about? Well, you know. We'll, just kind of seemed maybe like you were poking the bear a little. Why is it different this time? Well, I, I mean, you know, again, you know, Sean, I could tell you I've tried everything with this guy. I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm worn out. I mean, I have tried everything with this guy to the point of me. Let, let's have a one-on-one -on -one debate. Let's have a moderator there at the debate. Let put it on. What is it? IPPV, whatever. I pay per view. Put it on I pay per view. Charge ten bucks, whatever the hell you want. Give every freaking penny to the cauliflower out. I don't. I don't want a dime. Yeah, I, I heard you say I, that. Yeah, I want this to end. Okay. I've Kenny Bolin. I became very good friends with Kenny Bolin, who has known Jim Cornette for forty-three years okay behind the scenes Kenny Bolin was trying to set up some kind of a meeting or anything I went as far as to tell Kenny Bolin tell Jim I'll come out to Louisville I'll sit down with him I'll meet him he could say whatever he wants to my face let's get it all out of the open let's end it and I'll never say a word about it he can continue on with his shtick on the radio but I'll know that there's peace with you. But he can keep doing it. I'll never tell anybody. I, I went to that set. Jim Cornette said no. Okay? So he's, you know, I, I tried taking high road, high road, high road, high road. Finally, bro, he, he, he went on some podcasts. I, 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 don't, I don't know what triggered it. I, I can't remember what triggered it. He went on a podcast on his show. And he took it to like a whole different level. And, and he, he was the difference now. I was only living two hours from him now. I'm in Evansville, Indiana. He's in, he's in Louisville, Kentucky. So now I, I'm, I'm within driving distance from him. I'm not in Colorado anymore. I'm in driving distance from him now. So he went on and cut a podcast that was way over the line. I mean, like, he, he, he said the worst things I've ever heard him say. Like, it was, it, it, it almost didn't sound like shtick anymore. It, it, it sounded like it, it, this was raised to a whole new level. He said stuff about my mother, who had just passed away. He, he, he said some things about my wife, who he has nothing to do with the wrestling business. And, uh, you know, he's going to find out where I live. He's going to send somebody to my house. You know, all these things, right? So now I was still going to leave it alone. And now I started hearing from a lot of people that are friends of mine. And they, and they said basically, bro, he's, he's, he's gone off the deep end. I mean, this isn't just a wrestling promo. This isn't a typical Cornette promo. And they basically said, you know, you, you need to address this because they felt that if I didn't address it, they really weren't sure what he was going to do with me living so close. See, people don't understand, bro. And we talked about this earlier today, Sean. Bro, the, the fear isn't I'm afraid of Jim Cornette. Bro, if Jim Cornette wanted to, literally, bro, if Jim Cornette wanted to have a boxing match with me and, okay, we'll meet at this location, bro. You have a trainer, I have a trainer, we'll put on the boxing gloves, okay, we'll beat the shit out of each other, and we'll leave it all right there. Bro, I would do that tomorrow. I would do that in a while. That's not it. But 
what happened was, so I started getting all these, you know, Vince, you got to dress, you got to dress. Well, I, cu I put out a YouTube video, but I didn't freaking bury Cornette. You know, oh, your mother this and blah, blah, blah. I didn't do that. I, I kind of used my brain and was kind of creative, and I set it up as like, all right, apology. Jim, you want an apology for me. I apologize that you fell off the uh, scaffold and, and blew out your knees because you were Mark and didn't know how to bump. I apologize that Vince McMahon chose me over you. I apologize. To you. Everything I said was a fact. Everything I said was a fact, but... You know where Cornette was when you uploaded it? Uh -huh. He was here okay. doing our show. All right. And I guess I saw it on Twitter or something first. And I said, wow, I said, an apology to Jim Cornette. And I mentioned, I said, Jim, do you know anything about Vince apologizing to you? He's like, no, no, I didn't hear that. So we sent, who'd we send outside? Was it you? Probably was, yeah. I think I sent Adam outside. I said, could you just listen to this first? You're such a shit star, man. And make, no, 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 listen to me. Bro, you're, you're killing, not listening. You're, you're killing me, listen. bro. I said, can you make sure that this is legit? Before we talk about it at all. And you we were in the middle listened, of work. He came back and said, right? he, he came back and said, don't play it. And I said, okay, forget about it. Forget I mentioned it, Jim. Right. And we, we went on. And he but went back to his hotel room that night. And undoubtedly, because he addressed it eventually, so he did hear it. But okay. Well, that, that, that drove him over the deep end. Yeah. So, bro, that got over 100,000 downloads. So I, I'm thinking, okay, bro, fine. I did it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So now... See, this is, again, what, because, oh, I'm a pussy with the order of protection and this, that, and the other thing, right? Okay, see, the, the, can I tell you something, too, bro? These wrestling journalists, right, bro, I file an order of protection against Cornette. Ask, ask, ask me how many of them called me to find out why. Zero. Not, not one freaking part. They all wrote about it. Not one freaking part. But anyway, so I cut that video. Okay, next thing I know, I get a call from Kenny Bowen. Kenny says to me, Vince, I've known Jimmy for 43 years, okay? He's never said things to me in, in public um, the way he said them to me after that video. And I said, Kenny, what are you talking about? And Kenny told me flat out he is talking about sending somebody to your house to take care of you. And Kenny Bolin said, Vince, I'm telling you, I'm not saying anything's going to happen, but knowing him for 43 years and knowing this story for as long as it goes on, if I were you, I would get an order of protection just to be on the safe side. Now, you got to understand something, Sean. I lived in Evansville, Indiana. I lived in a log cabin, okay, in the woods. Bro, there's like a long winding road to my log cabin. Bro, there isn't a neighbor in sight. It was it very, very secluded. So immediately, I'm thinking in my mind, bro, here's literally what I, I, I'm, I've never said this story before. I'm going to tell you where this went. So now here's what I'm thinking in my mind. I live in the woods. There's not a neighbor in sight, okay? God forbid I'm not home and some truck, pulls up my driveway, you know, with the, with the good old Confederate flag, you know, on the hood or whatever, and my wife is home by herself, okay? Like, God forbid, you know, something like that would happen. Bro, the next thing I know, okay, I'm calling my brother-in-law, who has about dozens of freaking firearms. And I call my brother-in-law, and I said, uh, his name is Jeff, I said, Jeff, you, you need to lend me a gun, you know, just in case. I, I, this is what, and bro, I, I don't think for a second Jim Cornette's coming to my, bro, J Jim Cornette, when I left the WWE, bro, he, he, he called my house, he, he threatened to kill my family, my kids heard it the whole nine yards, he went on and on and on. The minute I was next to him, face to face like this at TNA, he did nothing. We worked side by side for years. He could have did anything he wanted to me. He did nothing. So it was never a threat of Cornette doing so. I, I, I'm afraid of Jim Cornette. I'm a big pussy. No, bro. I, God forbid 
a fan of Jim Cornette's. You they know, might see it as a call to action have, for them to. I'm, next thing you know, I'm talking to my, my, my brother-in-law about get My brother-in-law comes to my house with a freaking shotgun showing me how to use the freaking shotgun. When I got to that point, I was like, this is freaking ridiculous. Like, this is freaking wrestling. Like, seriously, bro? This is wrestling. I'm going to shoot a sh I'm going to shoot somebody in my driveway? Seriously. And that's, that's when, at that point, I, I took up Kenny Boland. I went, I got the order of protection. Okay? Bro, you got to, people don't, I, I don't know if people know how order of protections work. Did you have to play the podcast yeah, for, for the judge? I had, I had to give him a transcript. Okay. So the judge literally read the transcript of him threatening my wife going to find out where I live, sending somebody to my house. I, immediately, the judge gave me an order of protection. Okay. So my whole thing was like, to, I, I wanted to accomplish two things. Okay. Number one, I wanted to, I, actually, I want to accomplish three things. Number one, hopefully, bro, just leave me the F alone. Enough. Th th enough. Leave me the F alone. That's number one. Number two, God forbid somebody came to my house, okay? Now it would be tracked to him. Mm. Oh, well, so and so came to his house, but he's got. Okay, so that's number two. But number three, this is what I really wanted. Jim, claim it as a victory. Claim it. Take it as a victory. Look, look what I did to Russo. Look, he had to get an order of protection. That pussy, take it as a victory, bro. You, you, you won. I'm a pussy, bro. I'm afraid of you. You won. Here, here's an order of protection. Leave. End it, okay? Bro, this guy, something's not right upstairs. Bro, he takes a legal document that, that a, a, an official judge signed off on, okay? He, he makes a whole website about this now, and he's selling the order of protection online. And to make it worse, bro, he's trying to, to guise it by giving half of the money to charity. Bro, can you imagine what would have happened if I would have went back to the freaking prosecutor and said, I filed this order of protection. This is what he's done with it. He's gone online, he's selling it, and he has tied a charity into Can you imagine? The judge would have went freaking ballistic. But I, I didn't do that because at the end of the day, I still want what I wanted 17 years. Leave me the freak alone, bro. I don't say anything about you. I don't cut promos on you on my podcast. What do I have to do for you to leave me alone?